everyone. Today we are making a spiced flax mug cake. Welcome to the Radical Geek YouTube channel. Today we are going to make a really fast uh, spiced mug cake using flax meal. And it'll be quick and easy and in and out of the oven, no, or the microwave rather, no problem. I'm going to start with one tablespoon of uh, softened butter. You can melt it if you want. It makes no difference. This was just really very uh, soft. It's... Uh, I don't know, it's not melted, but it's definitely not really solid either. And it's not overly picky, but you need to be able to mix it in. And there's not a lot of fluid going in here. So a, a bit softened is a better plan. One egg. So not different from ba your basic uh, mug cake so far. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get started here then. The next thing is I've got a quarter cup of uh, flax seeds that I ran through my uh, magic bullet and ground up into a fine meal. You can buy pre-ground flax seeds, but I, uh, I prefer to buy them whole so that I can use them in a variety of uh, ways. And then I just grind my own. It's also uh, a ton cheaper at Costco if you buy the whole seeds. They're golden flax seeds. You can use the dark ones. It doesn't really matter. But I like the golden because that's just the way I am. So and that's that. Now I did say this was going to be spicy. And I don't mean chili spicy. Although even though I didn't bring any down. You could add a couple sprinkles of like a cayenne. Which kind of goes well in baked goods at times. But you need a half teaspoon of baking powder that's your rising agent it's almost in it should be in most mug cake recipes you will find uh, not all of them but in many of them it is because that is your typical rising agent I'm going to add now if you don't like yours quite as spicy you won't be adding quite as much you can cut it back it's highly flexible I don't worry about it, but I like it to really punch me in the face with some uh, uh, seasonal flavors. A whole teaspoon of cinnamon, and you can add a little more if you want. Uh, you can add less if you want, but I'm adding a bunch of other spices. Pretty heavy, so that's my uh, preference is one teaspoon. Uh, I have allspice, so I'm going to put... Not, I'm going to put maybe like a half a teaspoon of the allspice. It's a little bit, it can be overpowering, so you don't want a ton of it. And it doesn't want to open. There we go. Just a second there to dump it in there. And again, as you can see, I'm not being like super exact, but about half a teaspoon. Sometimes I just sprinkle it right in and, and eyeball it, but I thought if we were cooking on a video, I should at least pretend to use measuring spoons. Um, then here, what I have is cardamom. You definitely want to be uh, careful with that one because it can get perfumey, but it adds such an awesome kick up when you're making spice cakes of any kind. And the flax meal is a very nutty sort of flavor. So I use a whole, a, a half teaspoon of that. And then the next item I have is nutmeg. I told you I was going to be crazy with the spices, right? So I was not joking. Uh, nutmeg also, because it can add some grittiness, is only a, it's a heaping half teaspoon. So we can be a little generous there, but not too much because it does kind of get like a texture to it. So I, while I love the flavor, I know the, the grated... Sometimes you just 
You just need to balance it out because of the texture. But, and here's where my favorite, I love the smell too, is ground ginger. I sometimes will throw some uh, grated ginger root right in, but again, that does get a uh, textural issue. So you got to be careful with that. And this one, I do love ginger. And so I put the whole uh, teaspoon right in. So a full teaspoon. That's a lot of spice for one little mug cake. Now, in full transparency, I need you to know that this is one of those, uh, I'm making one cake, but it's two servings. If you eat the whole one, by all means, more power to you. But it's a lot of carbs if you're doing total carbs. I don't worry too much about flax, but I still don't want to eat this entire cake because it's heavy. And I like to have other things besides the cake. Uh, the last item I'm going to add is some almond extract. Uh, you can use pretty much whatever sort of lean in there you like. I think the almond uh, accentuates the nuttiness of the flax. But also, a lot of people don't love the almond extract uh, flavor. So I will tell you, vanilla works really well. So you can definitely just use your, your regular old vanilla. No worries there. I have all my dirty spoons. Let me set them over here. one two and I didn't use that one so but that's it and now we're gonna mix it and you should know ahead of time this is not gonna look liquidy it just doesn't and it actually is very tacky you want to make sure that you're using an extra large egg uh, or a jumbo uh, a few when you make brownies you know how like sometimes you look at the batter and you're like Oh, that's too thick. It's not going to ever work out. Uh, that's what you think about with this batter. And let me just give it a little bit more. I've got a, I can see a little teeny ball of that baking powder, so I want to mush it in there. But I'll show you what I mean about it being like super thick. And don't let that worry you. It's supposed to be that way. Uh, flax meal is super absorbent and gets very tacky. So... And you'll see why I say that it can be, that it's not the end of the world, that it's two servings for the whole cake. Because you don't want it to be your entire meal. If by, if you want it to be your entire meal, it can be. I will, uh, so there you go. So, you, so here's what I'm saying about it being like a very much like a paste. So you can see it's really thick. So once you get it all mixed up, uh, take a second and mush it down and get my secondary spatula here. Sorry, I should have had that up here, but I, I didn't. So, you know, that's what it is. It's always a little bit uh, chaotic because I don't focus really well. And no, I don't have ADHD. Uh, it's, uh, someone had asked me that. And... Uh, it came up recently in another conversation about uh, drinking coffee. And so uh, people were curious. I think it might have even been in our live stream. But I think I saw it in a group as well. So I don't know if I'm just a little uh, too extrovert that people ask me that question more than average. Or if it just happened to be something that came up in a topic somewhere. So it's been around more and I'm paying attention. Anyways, I just kind of like flatten it in there a little bit. I just like to, yeah, you, know, you probably don't have to be quite as uh, vigilant about it as I am being today. But I want to show you. There you go. I've mushed it down in there and made it all flat. And I made sure I went with my spatula and I tidied up the sides just to and make sure that it's not all floating up in there. If you don't tidy up the sides, it doesn't make a huge difference. But to me, it makes it an easier um dump out of the mug so there's our mug cake and here's the best part for those of you who've made mug cakes before and my microwave is awkward in this position um this microwave is a really old kenmore and for whatever reason it's super powerful now we have this is the one actually that I'm sending off with my kid when they move out this summer to their own apartment. But since I can have it right here, it's stored up, I thought I would use it. But, uh, so I'm going to put 70 seconds and just give it a quick check. But 
I will say that upstairs, my other microwave, which is a, a very more modern uh, LG, it's supposed to be 1100 watts, but it's not as powerful as this 900 watt Kenmore. Like this one cooks everything really super fast, and that one I always have to add extra time. Uh, so somewhere, you'll have to know your microwave and maybe even test it a couple times between 60 and 90 minutes. So I'm going to split the difference and go with 75 and hit start. Now, a lot of times while I'm cooking something like this, I would just pause the video and let stuff cook and then be like, ta-da, magic. But I'm going to go ahead and talk and have a little drink of coffee so that you can see how quickly this goes. And you can always peek through your microwave and watch it a little bit because one thing that's kind of neat about mug cakes is I probably should have turned the microwave, although I don't know that you could see it on the camera. But you can see the cake, it'll suddenly like rise up and get like super big and puffy and then sink back down and rise back up a couple times. And I, I don't know why I find that interesting, but I do. Mm. Sorry for that big long pause while I just looked like, took like 10 drinks of coffee. It was very tasty. And I think you know that since it's uh, later in the day, I just really needed my coffee. And I can tell you that the cake smells good. And one thing I will note, you noticed that I didn't put sweetener in there. However, uh, if you want sweet, you probably should add it. Let me give this a quick look. That I didn't even get to finish talking to you guys. I'm going to give it 10 more seconds. I'm not sure that it really needs it, but it felt just a teensy bit soft to me. So 10 more seconds will be great. So I didn't put sweetener, but you totally could. When we were putting all those ingredients in, you could, it, it's going to have to be sweetener to taste. I don't know. I don't know why, but I just like them like this. I usually, t uh, I like it uh, either on the side or crumbled in something like the uh, 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 Keto Chow Creamy Ice Cream or just a, uh, with a nice uh, layer of butter very, uh, in a savory fashion. Uh, it's not unsweet because it gets that nuttiness from the flax, but I'm pretty sure if you're looking for cake, you need to add sweetener. And this is one of those weird things that I usually don't bother with. Oops, there was a little plastic in there. That's not good. But it doesn't seem to bother anything, so that's also good. But, uh, but yeah, so sweetener to taste. You could add maybe a tablespoon or two of whatever your favorite sweetener is. Honestly, I think that if you had any of those concentrated sucralose drops, you could add like four drops and that would be tons of plenty. But there you go. So a little moist on the bottom, so sometimes you should let it rest. But cake, and it's burning my fingers because it's hot, but I wanted to show it to you in all its glory. Here we go on the plate. So you can see. Delightful. Looks great. It smells amazing. A little bit today did stick to the bottom of the mug, but not a lot. And check this out. If you're smart, you just go in there and you just grab it with the fork. And there you go. There's the bottom of your cake. Comes right out. It just flakes off a little bit. It's not a big deal. I'll smoosh it right there onto the bottom. You don't have to do that. You can even just discard it. I'm just greedy. Oh, that was my fork. <laughs> So, there you go, and like I said, this is two servings, and I was not smart enough to bring a knife with me, but that's okay, because it's soft, and you can just cut right down through it, and that's good, because now I can show you the inside. As you can see, it's that nice, uh, but crumbly spice cake texture. So, there we go, that little piece that was stuck on. And I feel like it's always important that we eat some so that you see that I actually do eat the food that I make. 
Also, I just really would like to. I love the way it smells because of all the spices. And you could easily half the spices if you are not a spice person. just right. Mm. Now, no, you do need to have some coffee or something with it because it's flax meal. So it does get a bit dense, not unpleasantly dense, but as you can see, it took some effort to eat it. And it's not like choky. It's just like, oh, it's a little bit sturdy and not in an unpleasant way. It's just like eating, I don't know if you ever had like a really good heavy pumpernickel bread and it has that weighty sort of texture to it, like that. It, it doesn't taste like that, of course, because it's spice cake, but that kind of weighty sort of bread taste, it's really good. And... It really complements more as a side than a standalone, but you could easily add like a whipped cream to it or, you know, if you can handle the carbs, uh, a little bit of uh, macerated strawberries or raspberries, uh, anything like that would be uh, lovely with it. I just eat it and I'm good to go because I pair it with my coffee, which gives me some fluid to deal with the absorptive uh, properties of the flax. So... I will also tell you, this is not a beginner new to keto recipe. This is 100% a um, maintenance recipe because it is uh, higher in carbs from the flax for your total carbs. So there you go. That's everything for today. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. On Wednesday, due to a uh, few requests, I'm going to make some of those uh, egg white wraps that we've demoed a couple times now and crisp them up in the air fryer and make some chips for us. So I'll see you then. Have a great day. I want you to know that I appreciate you and I love our community and everything about it. And I look forward to chatting with you all soon. Next Sunday is the uh, live stream again and we'll be doing a percolator coffee and a ketified version of Cowboy Kent's Spried Spam Balls. You guys and your request. So I will see you soon and talk to you all later. Bye bye.